If you're on the freeway, take the next upcoming exit. But instead of getting off, get right back on the freeway. If the car does the same, it's probably tailing you. If you're in town, go to an automatic car wash. It'll give you a few minutes to calm down and prepare. And if you still see the car around, you have unwelcome company. Now that you've confirmed you are being followed, don't panic. Sounds cliche, but it couldn't be more critical when you're behind the wheel. Panicking while driving is the worst thing you can do. If you need a few minutes to calm down, drive for a bit. Look around and remember where you are. Try to find a safe place you can go to. A popular cafe, a gas station, or a police department are always the best places to keep an eye out for. And definitely, do not drive home. The same rule applies to your work or any relative's houses. Chances are, this is just some random person who has no personal information on you. Leading them to your most frequented places where you're more vulnerable will only cause more problems. Don't let yourself get cornered. Avoid cul-de-sacs, small neighborhood roads, ones without an exit, parking lots. All can be dangerous in this situation. Stick to streets you know, so things like that don't take you by surprise. If you're stopped at a traffic light or stop sign, leave some space between you and the car in front of you. Always have a getaway plan if you find yourself in the worst-case scenario. Stay in your car and keep moving. And don't forget to lock all the doors and roll up the windows. It can take mere seconds for someone to get into an unlocked car while it's stopped. If this person rear-ends you at a traffic light, don't get out of the vehicle. If they were following you, they probably did that on purpose to get you out. If they approach your car, use that getaway space you left in front of you. Drive to well-populated roads. It's harder for this person to notice or keep following you when there's a lot of cars and witnesses around. Plus, they're more likely to get separated from you by a red light. Most bad guys are scared off by busy areas since their chances of getting caught increase. Don't acknowledge the pursuer. Try not to stare into your mirrors. Don't look behind your shoulder. Don't try to talk. If they only wanted to scare you, they might just give up and drive away. If they know you've noticed them, they could start keeping a further distance, so it'll be harder for you to get the details for the police. This is also a good time to notice and remember details about the person that's following you. The car's make and model, the color, the license plate. Get this valuable information, but don't stare while you're doing it. Now, if you're fully convinced someone's following you, call the police. If you have a passenger with you, have them do it. If you're alone, use hands-free technology or voice commands. Let's say the green hat guy is brave and decides to approach you and ask for something. Keep consistent eye contact. If they ask you for directions, don't look down or away from them to reach for your phone. You'll become distracted. Just tell them you don't know the way. Their asking is suspicious enough. Who doesn't have a phone with maps these days? If you're carrying books or shopping bags, be ready to drop them as soon as you feel something's off. Holding on to heavy items will slow you down. Now, you'll need your keys. Place them in your palm with the key's teeth sticking out through your fist. If worse comes to worse, you'll have something pointy to defend yourself with, so you can get away. Don't stay quiet. Make a fuss as you try to leave and yell fire instead of help. People react to that word more often than a call for general help. Plus, nobody wants to chase someone screaming at the top of their lungs and drawing attention to themselves. If they're following you from a further distance, then get your phone out and call the police. That's when you need to know all those details about the street you're on, your location, and the buildings. Stay on the phone with the dispatcher and follow their instructions. Another possible scenario is someone following you in public. If that happens, try to get to a grocery store or anywhere you can lose yourself in the crowd. If your jacket is a different color from your shirt, take your coat off. It'll be harder for this person to identify you. If you walk into a restaurant or coffee shop and your follower is determined, they'll walk in and wait for you. One option is to go straight to the bathroom and stay there for 5-10 to minutes. They might get tired and leave. If you get out and they're still there, get in line, order something, and casually let one of the staff members know you're being followed. 
they'll probably do something and keep an eye out for you. Grab your order and sit down. Get on your phone and let your family or friends know where you are so they can come and pick you up or keep you company. While you wait, try these tricks. Yawn. If the person yawns too, it means they've been watching you. Yawning is visually contagious. Pretend to look at your watch. If they check theirs too, they've got their eyes on you. We instinctively mimic the person we have our attention on. To trick them, leave the cafe and walk a little bit down the street until they lose sight of you. Then, as soon as they come out, walk back into the coffee shop. They'll have no reason to walk back in with you unless they were following you. When someone comes to pick you up, ask the staff to guide you to the back exit just to be safe. Avoid walking alone. If you do, keep to busy streets and always be aware of your surroundings. You know, all that stuff that lies beyond your phone screen? <laughs> Just messing with you. Even if you're not a millionaire who can be abducted for ransom, you still need to take safety measures so as not to get into this critical situation. Take your safety seriously. Don't walk on your own along deserted streets or after dark. Muggers aren't the only criminals you can come across in these circumstances. If you absolutely must go somewhere, make sure you travel with a companion. Criminals are more likely to choose you as a victim if you look lost and confused. So, before you go to a new place, plan your route and inform your relatives or friends of your plans. Be cautious of strangers coming up to you or loitering nearby for no reason. Change your everyday routine. Use different routes during your commute, visit different grocery stores, and try to have lunch or dinner at new places. Let's imagine these preventive measures didn't take effect and criminals managed to get to you. Of course, it's a highly stressful situation. Despite this, try to keep your panic at bay and analyze the situation. You need to understand if there's a real possibility of escaping in the first few minutes after an abduction. The first moments after a kidnapping are the riskiest. If you feel there's no easy way to escape, all your attempts won't be worth the risk. However, if there are other people in the area, the first minutes after you've been caught may be your only chance to get away. Try to attract the attention of passers-by. Someone will probably come to your rescue. What if there was nobody around and you didn't manage to escape? Now you're in a car, and your eyes are covered with a blindfold. You're terrified, your heart is palpitating, and you might be hyperventilating. First of all, concentrate and try to calm down. After you do this, it's time to apply your observation skills. You have to remember as many details as possible to use this information later. Pay attention to the kidnappers, to your surroundings, and to the route the car is taking. This knowledge may well help you to escape. It might also help your rescuers when the time comes. You still need to be in survival mode, and getting overly relaxed might make you inattentive. Have you offended anybody? Do you come from a well-off family? Maybe you look like someone who does. If so, then they'll probably ask ransom for you, which could be good news. All they want is money. Pardon the easier said than done cliche, but try to stay positive. Your calmness and friendly demeanor could make the perp let their guard down a little. They might slip up and not notice something important. Answer their questions wisely and thoughtfully. Don't yell or threaten. Show them that you're worthy of respect, yet harmless. You can even start a conversation, but don't overdo it. They know this trick, and they'll assume you're pretending to be polite just to deceive them. You can see a watch on someone's wrist, or even use the sun. If you just can't be calm, solve mental puzzles. Imagine conversations with your friends. Think of your best day ever. This will distract you from severe stress. For such cases, you need to have a code word or phrase on hand. For example, today I had a wonderful day as always. A wonderful day as always is your code that you're in trouble. If you somehow get a chance to call rescue services but can't speak, leave the phone on so they can track your call. If they don't want to show their face, that means they're planning on letting you go without being identified. If you happen to see their face but they didn't notice, keep it to yourself. Push-ups, squats, jumping jacks, jogging in place, anything you can do. It's a nice distraction and exercise improves blood flow. That'll make your thinking sharper. 
don't discuss escape plans or secret information with them. These people can rat you out in exchange for their freedom. Sometimes, other hostages may be one of the orchestrators in this scheme, just trying to find out important information from you. You can ask for a blanket or a glass of water. Such requests help establish contact, and at least make your stay a little more tolerable. You're driving home from work or a nice shopping trip, and notice the fuel tank is showing empty. But I just filled it up this morning! Don't be so quick to assume there's a problem with your car. It could be the sneaky work of burglars. Really determined thieves will stake your house out, follow you to work or your quick trip to the store, and drain all the fuel out of your tank to delay you as long as possible. If you find yourself with an empty tank, even though you're sure you filled up recently, call your neighbors and have them check on your place. If your fears are justified, call the police. The appearance of a new cleaner should alert you if you use these services regularly. If your cleaner has changed, the company should warn you ahead of time. Or check it yourself. If there's no information about this new face, then something fishy could be going on. And don't let the new cleaner in the house in the first place. For that matter, watch out for… The stranger at the door may call themselves a plumber, electrician, social worker, you name it. We've thought of it. If someone tries to pull this down on you, insist that they show you some ID. Such people may seem helpful and professional, but they're quietly studying your home while you're talking to them. Even if you just open the door and stand in the threshold, we can see your valuables from there. Along this same line, you might get… You're sitting there peacefully when you hear your doorknob wiggling and turning. Your heart instinctively jumps in your throat for a reason. Something's not right. So you go to the door and ask, without opening it of course, can I help you? The answer you're likely to get is, sorry, I'm visiting a friend. Must have mixed the address up. And naturally, they take off. Try to get a look at their face through the peephole. If you have a door camera, even better. Be diligent about checking your lights, especially the outdoor ones. If they keep going out, or the light bulbs are always coming loose, don't immediately assume you're having some electrical problems. Thieves can unscrew them or cut the wires. We feel safer doing what we do in the dark. Thieves can hang a flyer or a white sticker on your door. They also might slide a thin piece of plastic bottle in the doorway. This is how they mark houses that are easy to get into. They know just by looking at your place. If you see anything weird like this, even if it's likely just a harmless ad, remove it. If something hangs there for more than a day, burglars will assume nobody's home. Besides flyers, they may write numbers, X's, or strange coded symbols on the house or door. Keep an eye out. If you still have a home phone, do you get never-ending calls from unknown numbers? This could be their way of checking what times you're usually home or away. A burglar may immediately hang up or be silent when you answer such a call. My advice? Don't answer them. If it's important, the caller will leave a message. If they claim to be your utility company, get proof. Remember the thing about strangers at your door. Same thing applies here. It could be a gate often left open. Trash in your yard like chocolate wrappers or juice boxes. Watchers usually assume that if you're in, you'll close the gate and pick up the trash. But it's not just that. They might be moving some of your plant pots around to make a blind spot. That way, they can get in at night without anyone seeing them. Some might even throw rocks at the pavement to see if you have a dog or if your pet can hear the noise in the front yard. It's not just the occasional bark. Dogs can sense when shady things happen. If you take your pet for a walk and they start barking right before going in or when outside the house, they know something isn't right. The person watching your home might be hiding somewhere nearby, and your dog can smell them. Watchers do their own surveillance around a neighborhood. They pretend to be a salesperson, someone wanting to use the bathroom, or someone whose car broke down on your street. Their goal isn't just to see if someone's home, but who exactly is there, and if they can get in to inspect the house. They want to check for TVs, car keys, and other valuables. You might notice someone taking pictures outside your house or your neighbor's place while they're walking a dog or jogging by. They do this to inspect your entrance better using the photos later on when they're alone. They analyze the photos for blind spots and how close houses are to each other. If they have less space between them, the neighbors won't spot them easily. 
alert your neighbors, and snap a few shots of them yourself. If someone suspects you're away on vacation, the best time to go by your home is in the middle of the night. You might hear the doorbell ring at 2 a.m. If they see lights go on, they'll walk away. If not, that gives them the signal to enter. Your pet's bark is like an alarm system, and it's the last thing a person breaking in wants to hear. When watchers snoop around, intending to get in and spot your dog, they might open the gate to let them out. Then they come by the next day to check if it came back. If it's not there to alert you or your neighbors, they try to get in. You might notice a cookie under your doormat. This is an old trick watchers use to find out if you're at home and what time you get in. When you step on the mat, the cookie crumbles. They return later to see if someone stepped on it. If you don't notice it, they'll investigate further. They'll put down more cookies the next day at different times to see what time you're at home. If nobody steps on it, they know the house is empty. It could be a broken window, a lock, or a loose fence. It's not just to see if you're at home or if you have an alarm, but an excuse to get in. They might put on a uniform and come by an hour later, offering free repairs for your window. They'll use the excuse that they saw the broken window while they were passing by and wanted to make an offer because they're new in the business. They'll come in to measure the frame and, while doing so, inspect the house for weak spots and valuables. If your mailbox is brimming with newspapers, flyers, and other correspondence and junk mail while you're away, it also sends potential burglars a message that nobody's been home for a while. Have someone collect your mail and suspend your subscriptions if possible to keep your mailbox from advertising your absence. Since we're on the topic of leaving your house for some prolonged period of time, don't forget that it's best to keep this information as private as possible. You can share vacation plans with your trusted people, especially if you need them to check in on your house while you're away. But social media is definitely a no-no. Thieves are known to monitor other people's posts about upcoming vacations in order to find their next target. Creepy. And here's another way you can make it look like somebody's still home when the house is actually empty. I know, leaving a light on isn't exactly the best for your wallet, but it's just for when you go on vacation. And you can always put that light on a timer that goes on just at night. If you're a dog owner, like me, one added bonus of having such an awesome pet is that the sight or sound of one can keep burglars away. And if you don't have a pooch, just fake it. Put up a beware of dog sign, for instance. It'll make thieves less likely to choose your house as their target. A built-in wall safe is the best measure by far. But if you don't have one, you can still use your imagination and find lots of places to stash your valuables. A decoy book or toy is good enough, or you can even get more creative by making your own hiding place, like a sliding tile in the bathroom. While burglars are more likely to break into a house from the first floor, they can see an opportunity in a tall growing tree that looks right into a window on the second floor. You'll do best by cutting or trimming it so that no one can make their way in from there. Yeah, this sounds pretty obvious, but you shouldn't forget that burglars love silence. They prefer to go about their business quietly, so that they don't bring attention to themselves. Makes sense, right? So, if they come in and trigger an alarm that wakes everybody up, they've already failed and will want to retreat as fast as they can.